Hi, this is Lou, and today I'm going to be playing with some watercolour monoprint techniques. A while ago I was running a workshop and somebody asked me if it was possible to use watercolour on a jelly plate. And I didn't know, so I thought I'd give it a go, um, find out what happens, and do a bit of research around it. Doing that, I came across some other methods of watercolour monoprint, and I thought I'd try them out and see what worked best and yeah, give you my thoughts on it. So to start with, this is my gel plate. Um, it's a Jelly Arts gel printing plate, and I have had mine for a very long time, so it's a bit mucky. Uh, before I used it today, I gave it a good wash uh, with some nice soapy water uh, to degrease it, but you'll see that it's still a little bit stained because it's, it's very old, it's been well used. And then I prepared another couple of printing surfaces that I thought might work quite well. So you need a non-porous surface for monoprinting, um, an acrylic plate, a piece of glass, or something like this, um, really simple file folder. I've just put a piece of paper inside it so that I can see what I'm doing. And then I'd seen on some, uh, on some blogs and things that uh, using washing up liquid or dish soap uh, on your non-porous surface helps the uh, the watercolour not to bead up. So I thought I'd try it on half of this one, to see what the difference is. So I'm just using a little bit of washing up liquid on a paper towel, and I'm gonna rub it all over the bottom half of this uh, file folder. Just a little experiment to see what happens. This third method uses cling film, or I believe some parts of the world call it saran wrap. And it's a very low tech method and I came across it in a video and I'll put the link to that video in the description. So you can go and check that out. But basically it's stretching out your cling film uh, over a piece of paper. So again, you can see what you're doing and taping it down and then using that as your non-porous surface. So I'm very carefully laying this out, trying not to get it to stick to itself and then using some masking tape just to tape it down to the table and trying to stretch it nice and flat so I've got a nice smooth surface to work on. Finally, I'm gonna prepare some paper and I decide that hot press watercolor paper is probably gonna be the best for this. So I take a big sheet and I tear it down into some small manageable sizes. And then for this technique, you want it to be wet. So I'm just gonna soak mine in a little tub of water. But you could spray yours if you wanted to instead. You only need to do this a few minutes before you're printing. But I wanted to get mine all prepared ahead of time. And then it's a case of painting your watercolour onto the surfaces that you've prepared and then letting it dry. I'll be interested to see whether the paint beads up, how much it beads up, and what kind of consistency of paint I need to get a good print. I'm working with a tube of paint so I can squeeze a little bit out and I can use it nice and thick and gloopy. I'm also going to try a few areas where I add a little bit more water to it. But I have a feeling I won't be able to add too much water um, and still be able to control it. So I'm starting with painting onto the gel plate and I'm just gonna do some really simple patterns uh, for this experiment. I just want to see what happens. So I decide to do um, some circles and I just start painting circles onto the gel plate. And the first thing that I notice is that yes, the paint is beading up, but also it seems to be disappearing. It's like I put a lot of paint on and if I was putting that much onto straight onto watercolour paper, it would be really, really, really dark. But I put it onto the gel plate and it almost seems to disappear. So I do the first couple of rows of circles with actually fairly thick paint, not that you'd really be able to tell from what you can see on the screen. You can see that it's beading up a little bit. Um, and you're getting those kind of telltale little dots uh, in the brush strokes that you make. Then I decide to add just a tiniest little bit more water and that dotted effect is really emphasized. And instead of circles, I've kind of got just kind of the random dots. So 
So for the last few rows, I go back to my much thicker, less wet paint. I have to say that the only water I added into this before I started was that I just wet my paintbrush and then I dried it off on a paper towel just to, yeah, get, just to get it moving. But that was the only water that I put in when I started. So it was really kind of quite dry, thick paint. And even so, you can see it's still, it's beading up on the gel plate. So I put that to one side to dry because for this method you want it to dry completely and then the water on the wet paper will reactivate the paint when you come to print. And I start doing the same thing on my cling film. Actually I found this time that I was able to create the circles a little bit more cleanly. They're still beading up, you can still see those telltale little dots. It didn't take quite so much paint to be able to see what I was painting this time. It seemed to go a little smoother. Again, I did a couple of rows of quite concentrated paint and then I added a tiny, the tiniest little bit more water. I just dipped the very, very tip of my brush into the water. That's how much water I added. And you can see the difference in the circles that I made. They're much more like dotty. I squeezed a little bit more paint out of the tube and went in with some more of that paint straight from the tube, trying to get a little bit more concentrated colour on the kind of the fourth and fifth and sixth rows. And then kept going back and forth between the really thick concentrated paint and some with slightly, uh, very, very slightly more water in, just to get a variation across the page. Again, I leave that to dry before printing and I move on to my third surface. And I want to see in this one whether the washing up liquid made any difference whatsoever to the surface. That's all dried on the surface now and it's at the bottom of the screen. So I paint some long strokes on this one but I also want to do some of those circles as well just to get a, an accurate comparison. And I found that actually on this um, kind of acetate uh, file folder I, could, I was able to get a much smoother paint consistency. I didn't have to use as much paint and it wasn't uh, bubbling up as much. And I'd expected that on the bit that I put the uh, the soap on, but what I didn't expect was that at the top of the page, where there wasn't any soap on it, uh, and it was just that smooth non-porous surface, it wasn't actually beading up as much as it did either on the gel plate or on the cling film. But yes, I can say that the, the soap that I put on definitely made a difference. And you can really see that on the final few strokes that I made with the paint, I decided to add a little bit more water. And at the bottom of the page, you get the nice smooth brush stroke. And then at the top, it all kind of breaks up. I've got my paper that's been soaking in the tub and I want to blot it before I print with it. So I've just got some paper towel and put it down on the surface and I've got some extra on hand to blot on top of it. You could just use a regular towel if you wanted to. I take one sheet at a time take it out and just blot it with that paper towel. What I'm looking for is to have no kind of visible shiny water left on the surface. I still want it to be damp, but I don't want it to kind of be dripping. So I take that and one by one, I try the different surfaces that I've inked up. First of all, the cling film, because this was the first to dry and just carefully lay the paper on top of the, the now dried watercolour. And the theory is that the water in the paper, the damp paper, will reactivate the paint and it will transfer onto the paper. I put a clean sheet of just copy paper over the top just to protect the surface and I give it a good rub all over, making sure that there's nice contact all over the, all over the page. When I think it might be ready, I just lift up a corner just to see. And if I'm not sure, if I'm not happy with the print, I can lay it back down again and uh, press it some more. But actually on this occasion, it looks like it's transferred really well. So I'll pick it up and yeah, that's my first print. I'm gonna do the same with the other surfaces now. But before I do, I think there's enough ink on there to get a second print out. So I'm going to have a go 
uh, with another sheet of paper and print the same image the second time. This second time, I didn't blot the paper quite as much. I thought it would be interesting to see whether the ink ran a little bit more if the paper was a bit more wet. And actually it did, and I'll show you the results properly later on. For the print on the file folder, I did the same thing. And finally, the jelly plate, which was the slowest to dry. Right, let's have a look at all the prints and see what the results are like. So first of all, the two that I made on the cling film, and this is the very first print, and you can see that it's come out really clearly. It's quite sharp, the lines are quite defined, and where the, uh, the paint beaded up on the surface of the cling film, you've got these really clear little dots. That could be a really interesting technique. This was the second one, and for a ghost print, for, that's what you call a second print, there's an awful lot of ink on there and there was still more that I could have printed. You can see that it's run a little bit more than the other one and that's because the paper was a little bit damp. And actually at the top of the paper I seem to have some more kind of uncontrollable bits, more kind of puddles. I don't really like that so much. I do like the kind of the softness of uh, some of this print but I don't like the kind of smudgy bit at the top. So this is the print that I made on the acetate on the file folder. It's a little bit lighter than some of the others and I think that's because I didn't need to put quite so much ink down to see where I was putting it. If you look at the left hand side, you can kind of see that at the bottom portion, uh, it's a little bit smoother and then at the top, you get kind of more of those little dots where the ink beaded up. And that's because the bottom half of the page had the, uh, the soap on it and the top half didn't. So you can kind of see a bit of a dividing line where that changes. And then this was the print that was made on the gel plate. And considering that I thought that the ink had almost completely disappeared into the plate, um, it, this one looks quite dark. It looks quite similar to the first one in that it's quite well defined. I do have one of those kind of bludges there where maybe the paper wasn't quite as blotted as the rest of it was, um, which I'm not too happy with. But the rest of it I quite like. Uh, what I fancy doing is maybe taking one of these and spraying it with some more water and seeing what happens when it runs. So I might try that with one of the less successful prints. But another interesting way of getting your watercolour down onto paper, I think it's possible to create two or three with the ink on the same plate and have them coming out kind of looking quite similar. So it could be a way of creating multiples, even though this is a mono printing technique. So thanks very much for watching today. If you've enjoyed it, then please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more from me, then do subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be taking a few weeks break over Easter, and then I'll be coming back with a brand new season and a brand new theme. If you want some advance notice of what that's going to be, um, then sign up to my mailing list and I'll be sending out a newsletter um, shortly before the next season arrives. So thanks again and see you soon. Bye.